Lesson 5.7, write zeros in the dividend to give it more digits. When the dividend needs more digits for us to complete our division problem, we can write trailing zeros to the right side of the dividend. We learned in the last video that when we have a divisor that's a decimal, we can multiply it by a power of 10 to move the decimal point to the right to make the divisor a whole number. When we move the decimal point by multiplying the divisor and dividend by a power of 10, the dividend may need zeros as placeholders. We multiply the divisor and the dividend by 100 to move this decimal point two hops to the right so the divisor is a whole number. Now we need zeros as placeholders here. Now we'll be able to complete our division. 15 fits into 30 two times because 15 times 2 is 30. We subtract and get a 0. 15, and it's this zero's turn to come down. 15 fits into 0 zero times. That's our quotient, 20. So remember the decimal point is going to hop two places to the right, which means this decimal point needed to hop two places to the right. And in the quotient, it goes directly above the new position. We learned that in video 5.6, which is linked in the description. When we're in the middle of solving a division problem and we run out of dividend digits, we can write trailing zeros to the right side of the dividend to continue. Here we have 20 and 6 tenths divided by 5. We know 5 fits into 20 four times. We write a 4 in our quotient, and 5 times 4 is 20. We subtract and get a 0. Now it's the 6's turn to come down. 5 fits into 6 one time, and 5 times 1 is 5. We subtract and get a 1. And we can't divide anymore because 5 won't fit into 1. But if we write a 0 to the right side here in the hundredths place, we can drop it down and ask ourselves how many times can 5 fit into 10. That would be 2 times. We write a 2 in the hundredths place for the quotient, and we get a remainder of 0. By writing a 0 to the right of our dividend, we were able to continue dividing until we had a 0 remainder. Writing zeros to the right side of a decimal does not change the value of the decimal. We have 20 and 6 tenths. We can write it as a fraction as 20 and 6 tenths. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by 10, we'll have 20 and 60 hundredths which can be written as a decimal as 20 and 60 hundredths. We can do the same thing and multiply it times 100. We'll have 20 and 600 thousandths. We can write it as a decimal as 20 and 600 thousandths. So writing zeros to the right side of a decimal does not change the value of the decimal. We still have two tens, zero ones, and six tenths. We can write as many zeros to the right side as we need. In video 2.7, which is linked in the description, we learned that we can interpret the remainder as a fraction when it needs to be part of the quotient. Here we have 15 divided by 2. 2 fits into 15 seven times because 2 times 7 is 14. We subtract and get a 1 as a remainder. This 1 will be the numerator and the divisor will be the denominator. And by writing zeros in the dividend, we can write the remainder as a decimal amount. We write a zero in the dividend to write the quotient as a decimal amount. When we had a remainder one, we can add a decimal point and a zero so that we can drop down another zero, another digit for the dividend. And two fits into 10 five times. Two times five is 10, we get a remainder of zero. And because we added this decimal point and this zero, the decimal point for the quotient will go directly straight up. And five tenths is equal to the fraction five tenths. If we divide the numerator and denominator by a common factor, it'll equal one half. Five divided by five is one, and 10 divided by five is two. 
when we need to regroup the amount in the remainder to the next place value to continue dividing, we can write a zero or a decimal point and a zero or several zeros. Here we have 282 divided by 12. We start by asking ourselves if 12 can fit into the 2. No. Can 12 fit into this 28? Yes, because 12 times 2 is 24. We subtract that, get a 4. Now it's the 2's term to come down. How many times can 12 fit into 42? Well, 12 times 3 is 36. We subtract the 36 and we get a 6. And we can't divide anymore. But if we add a decimal point right here, which means the decimal point in the quotient is going to go right up here above it, we can add a 0 and ask ourselves how many times 12 can fit into 60. And 12 times 5 is 60, so we know we put a 5 in the quotient. We subtract 12 times 5 is 60 and get a 0 remainder. So we divide until we have an amount less than the divisor. So when we got to the 6, it was less than the, the divisor 12. We insert a decimal point and a 0 at the end of the dividend and place a decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. We drop down that 0 and continue dividing. Here we have 10 divided by 4 tenths. We can multiply the 4 tenths times 10 to turn it into a whole number but that means we're going to be forced to, to multiply the dividend by 10. So that's going to move it one decimal hop to the right. We'll have to put a 0 as a placeholder. And the decimal point's new position is going to be above this new decimal place. Directly above it like that. We end up with 4 as a whole number and 100 as our dividend. We have 100 divided by 4. By multiplying the divisor and dividend by a power of 10, we remove the decimal point from the divisor and add another place value to the dividend. And we use a 0 as a placeholder. 4 fits into 10 two times because 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract 10 minus 8 and get a 2. It's this 0's turn to come down, and 4 fits into 20 five times. We subtract 4 times 5 equals 20 and get a 0. We have a 0 remainder, so we know we're finished. And remember, decimal points are written to the right of the 1's place. So the 0 is in the 1's place. When we add a decimal point, we put it right here, and we'll have to use a 0 as a placeholder. It's very easy to change a whole number into a decimal. We have the whole number 2, we just add a decimal point and a 0. We can add a decimal point and two zeros or three zeros. Here we have 17 as a whole number, we just add a decimal point and some zeros. Even larger numbers like 329, we add a decimal point and some zeros. We write a decimal point to the right side of the ones place, then write zeros. Let's try some higher order thinking skills. Mr. Kim has a piece of wood that is 6 meters long. He wants to cut it into 8 equal sized pieces. What will be the length of each piece? So we think. We need to divide 6 divided by 8. But this 6 is not great enough for us to divide it by this 8. So we can write a decimal point and zeros in the dividend to give it more digits. We can write a decimal point and zeros. Sometimes we'll need to write more than one zero in the dividend. In this case, we need to do two of them. We think 8 can't fit into 6, but 8 can fit into 60, because 8 times 7 is 56. We subtract the 56, we get a 4. It's this zero's turn to come down, because what we have here, this 4, is less than the divisor, so we needed another zero. 8 fits into 40, five times, and eight times five is 40. We subtract and get a zero, we know we're finished. We know that each piece of wood will be 75 hundredths meter each. And the decimal point in the quotient goes directly above the decimal point in the dividend. Do we need to write a zero in the dividend to find the quotient? We need to circle yes or no. And 
we can solve these to find out and see if we had to put a zero in the dividend. Here we have one and two tenths divided by three tenths. We can write it as one and two tenths divided by three tenths. We can move this decimal one hop to the right, so we'll have to do it for the dividend. Now our equation is 12 divided by three. We can do 12 divided by three. That would be equal to four because three times four is 12. We would subtract and get a zero. So no, we didn't need to add a zero in the dividend to solve that one. Now we have 3 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths. See how they traded places? Now this is the dividend. Now we have 3 tenths inside the long division bracket. We have 1 and 2 tenths. We can move this decimal point one hop by multiplying it by 10, which means this one is going to move one hop. Now we have 3 divided by 12. But 3 isn't great enough, so we can extend this. Add a 0, 12 fits into 30, and our decimal point is going to go right here, isn't it? It's going to go straight up. 12 can fit into 30 two times, because 12 times 2 is 24. 30 minus 24 is 6. We can add another 0 and make that a 60. And now 12 fits into 60 five times. And 12 times 5 is 60. We subtract and get a 0. We see our quotient is 25 hundredths. So we did need to add zeros to this one. And actually, when we got to this point where we needed to add the 0, we could have just stopped and said yes. We didn't need to continue solving it. As soon as we added that zero, we answered the question, yes, we do need to add a zero. This is about the rate of speed formula. You're going to be working with this a lot in middle school. And the formula for velocity, or rate of speed, is r equals d divided by t. And the r represents rate of speed, d represents distance, and t represents time. We can use division and the formula for rate of speed to find a car's rate of speed in miles per hour if it travels 178 miles in 2 and 5 tenths hours. So that would be 2 and 5 tenths would be 2 and a half hours, wouldn't it? We have 178 divided by 2 and 5 tenths. So we're going to find our rate by doing 178 divided by 2 and 5 tenths. We move the decimal point one hop by multiplying the divisor times 10, which means we're going to have to do it for the dividend. But we have an empty place here, so we could put a zero as a placeholder. We ask ourselves how many times 25 can fit into 1. It can't, so the answer is not going to go up here. How many times can 25 fit into 17? None. It can't, so the answer is not going to go above the 7 either. How many times can 25 fit into 178? And if you think of money, there's four quarters in a dollar, that's 425 cents. And then another 75 cents would be three more, that would be seven. And 25 times seven is 175. We subtract and get a three. We drop down this zero, 25 fits into 30 one time. And 25 times one is 25. We subtract and get a five. We drop down another zero, 25 fits into 50 two times. We subtract the 50 and get a zero. Our decimal point is going directly above where it went here when we hopped over one place value. We find it's 71 and 2 tenths miles per hour. So 71 and 2 tenths miles per hour is the rate of speed, and it equals 178 miles in two and five tenths hours. As always, remember that we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. And remember, there are links in the bottom of the video description to PayPal and Patreon to help me support my dogs and all my efforts that I've put in to help you. In the next lesson, 5.8, we're going to be doing some word problem solving with decimal division. 
We're going to see how to use the strategy work backwards. I hope I'll see you there. Don't forget to hit the like button. Bye.